What happened with Silicon Valley Bank? Silicon Valley Bank is, as uh, Silvergate used to be a sleepy little community bank in Southern California, San Diego area, um, and then became a crypto bank and took off and became, became well known. Silicon Valley Bank has, has been well known for a long time. It is a fairly well known bank because of its relationship to Silicon Valley. It's been around for a long time. It's basically had a similar business model the entire time. Uh, basically, Silicon Valley Bank banks Silicon Valley. It banks startups and it banks um, it banks venture capital funds. So venture capital funds put their money. You know, they raise a billion dollar fund. They'll put the money in Silvergate, uh, and and you know they're not looking for an interest on the deposits. Uh, the, the deposits don't bear an interest. Um, the same with startups, Silicon, the, 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 uh, the uh, you know, the venture capital fund takes the, takes the money that it has, it invests in a startup, that basically what that means is it moves the money from its account at Silicon Valley Bank to the account of the startup in Silicon Valley Bank. Very easy, uh, very easy to transact. Again, startup is not looking to make money off of its deposit at the bank, so it doesn't mind getting zero on its deposits. And so Silicon Valley Bank makes loans, some of them to startups. It sometimes even takes equity as part of the repayment of those loans, and it's done very well with that. But then over the last few years, as venture capital has just exploded and there's been a huge amount of money in Silicon Valley and a huge amount of money invested in startups, Silicon Valley Bank again had huge amounts of, of deposits, uh, an increase in, in deposits that was massive. Many of those deposits landed up going into, invested in securities. And they did the same thing as Silvergate did. They, they basically looked for a yield on those securities. They wanted a return on those securities at a time where the yield curve was flat, relatively flat. And therefore, they bought long-term securities. They bought two, five, ten, I don't know, maybe some mortgage-backed securities. And again, as interest rates went up because of inflation, what you saw is that security portfolio dropped in value. And that is fine if you can hold on. But the problem was that over the last few months, Venture capital has not been investing in those startups. The startups are not getting a replenishment of money. Venture capital is not raising new capital. And the startups are spending the money. That is, it's going out of the bank account of Silicon Valley Bank and into the bank accounts of employees, suppliers, the people who rent their offices. So there is net deposits leaving Silicon Valley Bank as the venture capitalists right? And as the startups spend the money. And where is Silicon Valley Bank going to get the money to fill all those, to, to pay off all those deposits? Well, they should be able to sell securities, but they've got a bunch of securities that if they sell, they're going to lose a lot of money. And that's what happened. They were forced to sell securities. They declared that they lost money. In order to compensate for that loss of money, they said they were going to raise capital. This suggested to the marketplace that Silicon Valley Bank was in trouble, which it was, and that it was overvalued, which it was, given that it was probably going to raise capital at a far lower valuation. Again, Silicon Valley Bank's business is still okay. Its, its loans will still pay back. It, it's, it's a long, well-established bank. It's been doing the same thing for a long, long time. But they got hit by the securities. They got hit by inflation. They got hit by taking on too much risk in a place where you're not supposed to take risk. John says, buy Bitcoin. Do you see what Bitcoin's doing today? Bitcoin's not doing too well. It might, might be correlated with uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, last I see over the last 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 8.3%. It's below 20,000 now. 18, it's below 20,000. I mean, I don't know how long that'll stay. I'm, I'm not predicting Bitcoin. But it does look like Bitcoin is uh, kind of suffering a little bit with uh, 
with what is going on in the uh, in the uh, banking uh, in the banking sector. Um, so Silicon Valley Bank uh, dropped sixty percent yesterday as it announced it was going to raise capital, uh, and 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 uh, people like Peter Thiel, a bunch of other venture capitalists were telling their companies, their startups that they're invested in, to pull their money out of Silicon Valley Bank. You had a bank run. Everybody went to the bank to start pulling money out. Silicon Valley Bank doesn't have the capital to sustain that unless it keeps selling securities at a loss. And uh, it turned out this morning that they couldn't raise capital, that they went out into the market and tried to raise capital and nobody would give them the capital. So they announced this morning, and this is why trading was halted, they announced this morning that they would seek a buyer, somebody to buy them out. Now, this is fascinating. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank is not a bank that anybody would have expected would sell. It's not a bank that it's obvious who is going to buy. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is a bank that... Um, that has a great business model. It's been a great bank for a long time, but it requires particular expertise. But what it turns out, I think, from Silvergate and from Silicon Valley is, and this has been true for a long time, and this is one of the great weaknesses of American banking, is you really need a diversified depositor base. You need depositors, you know, from a wide array of industries so that you don't get one of these, everybody's leaving crypto, so everybody pulls their money out of Silvergate. Um, there's no new money in, uh, in, in venture, so everybody's moving money out of Silicon Valley. It's interesting to me that this happened at Silicon Valley Bank because they should know better. They did, um, you know, this is a bank that uh, has been through more than one, um, you know, tech downturn. You'd think they would have learned from those uh, what happens. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much the story. It would be interesting to see who buys Silicon Valley Bank. There's a lot of value there. They're not going to sell for zero. Uh, this is more a liquidity issue than it is an actual value issue. This is the kind of problems bank get, banks get into relatively frequently. Well, not frequently, but periodically to a large extent because of the structure of the American banking system, the, 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 the very little reserves that bank actually have. Um, you know, we saw that in 2008, 2009. Uh, banks don't keep much reserves uh, because the Fed, you know, the Fed basically doesn't require it, and there's, in that sense, a race to the bottom. This is, so, so all of this, a consequence of regulation, a consequence of inflation, a consequence of zero interest rates. I, I told you that rising interest rates would have negative impacts on the economy. I expected zombie companies to, to, to really get hit. Turns out those zombie companies were smart in that they had funded themselves with long-term debt so they don't have to refinance it anytime soon. So they're holding out for now. But, th but this is what, what is amazing about markets and what's amazing about bad government policy. You just don't know where it's going to manifest itself. You just don't know. And um, here we are with, with uh, two banks getting into real deep trouble. I, Silvergate, I probably would have expected because I, I've always been skeptical about crypto, but I would have never expected this of Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, so here you, here you see uh, financial institutions getting into trouble. And um, uh yeah, it, all because of unintended consequences of raising interest rates. And I'm sure the Fed is carefully watching the banking sector to see what happens. By the way, just so everybody knows, and it's clear I should have said at the beginning, I, have, I, I do not hold a position in Silvergate. I do not hold a position long or short in Silicon Valley Bank. I, I guess I wish I had a short, but I hold no positions in either banks. Uh, nothing that I've said so far should be con construed as investment advice, purely educational. I don't think I said anything about investment. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, all those caveats, hopefully you found that beneficial to understanding what's going on right now. Silicon Valley Bank will probably sell. It'll probably sell at a decent price. 
Um, shareholders will still lose a lot of money, um, but uh, you know somebody's going to buy them because there's real value there. Uh, as I said, Silvergate is unwinding and is going away. All right. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.